You look like a JCPenney model from the 90s. Hi, I'm the bag full of bags that's at your white friend's house, Yvonne DeCulo. Thank you. And I'm that kindly old man in your television that says, welcome to the neighborhood, Kate <laughs> And welcome to the Victory Lap, where we are going to be discussing the finale of All Stars Season 3 of... I would watch an All Stars with just Stacey. Every single challenge, just Stacey Lane Matthews. But it's green screened of a of six. Multiple Stacys. Twelve to six. All doing the Stacey exact Lane same Matthews. challenge. Hey, this was quite the pisser of a finale. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. So Morgan is gone. How are you feeling about that? I mean, I kind of made my peace with it, what, two weeks ago now? Yeah. It was pretty ballsy of BB to be like, so Trixie, who did you pick? Who was your lipstick? Oh. When just last week she was like, out of respect for Dayla. So the challenge this week was for the girls to write, choreograph, and perform different lyrics to Kitty Girl, which hey, is a Kitty great Girl. song by RuPaul. Fun song. So then the other big twist was that the Eliminated Queens were all gonna come back and they were going to what was not quite announced at the beginning, but they were ultimately going to become a jury to of choose queer. of their peer, queer, peers queer peers to determine the top two. I would like to go on record as saying I think it was a poor move to call it a jury of your queer peers when I think a jury of your queers is just... That would have been less of a mouthful. Less of a mouthful and it still gets the pun across. Meow. He can't go. But he's a kitty boy. Know. He can be a kitty girl. Hi, the, the... How dare you tell him he can't be a kitty girl. You, you can be a kitty, a kitty girl, girl if you girl want. You, want to. you don't have don't balls. Don't be a kitty girl. Don't be a kitty girl. So moving on to the main stage, RuPaul looked amazing. She Ru looked so good. She looked that real good. That gown with all that tool, tool and a big half piece that and... went down. Oh, it was everything, and I wanted to rub it on my entire body. And I loved her weird. I loved the way that Michelle looked. Michelle looked so cute and pink, <sighs> so beautiful, like a fresh vagina. Oh, what do you think about each performance? Let's start with Kennedy. She started off with a bang. She did have great energy. Vocally, I think she did a really, really good she job. She sounded so good. She sounded great. I was not overly impressed with her choreography. It was just a lot of what I've seen Kennedy pull out. It should be on brand for who you are and what you represent, but at the same time, I feel like you need to excite in the final thing. My problem with Kennedy's was that, I mean, I, I know this of Kennedy is that she's not necessarily a choreographer. She doesn't choreograph really any of her dances. She kind of just feels the beat and she goes with it, with the dances that she knows how to do. And so I felt like you could see that on her face as that she was kind of forgetting her place. And so she was looking around a lot to try to figure out where her mark was supposed to be. And I felt like she just looked a little confused through all of it. Okay, so next we have Shangela, and Look, I really wait, liked oh, how she wait. looked. I thought she looked really fabulous. Cute. She looked like wait. she was gonna go, you know, step into her Vegas resin, 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 resin. Her Vegas resin. I thought her choreography was pretty standard Shangela. There was nothing super groundbreaking about it. It was good on brand Shangela, and it was exciting, but it was not new. It was much like most of this competition. It was, you know, her reaching into her bag of tricks and pulling out what she's I just don't at. see what the problem is with that. Alaska did that, you know, and like a lot of queens who have come before have done that. You've got something that works, but you need to take it to the next level, not just rely on it as it is. You need to take what you've done before and move it to a place where it's even better now. I don't think any of the queens have done that at all this season except Aja and Dela. When I'm watching an all-star season, I should never feel like it's a constant referential thing of like, remember when I did this? Pa! Next we have BB, who if I'm being honest, I don't really remember because I was so perturbed by her being in the sewing room, the sewing room, and there was a whole scandal with her and Aja and the sewing machine. So like, I just honestly don't remember it because I was so thrown off by that that I wasn't paying attention to anything else. So if you have any thoughts, feel free to share them. She sounded fine. Um, I remember she opened with like mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fiercest of the mall or something like that. Which, how many times have I heard that in how many different drag numbers? She looked beautiful though. Um, I certainly liked that outfit that she was wearing for the number better than her 
final runway outfit. Finally, we have Trixie in her wig Troxy that Moto. made that um, Halloween oogie spooky picture go viral. That was that same wig, wasn't it? I thought Trixie looked really great. I really liked her outfit. Uh, I liked her lyrics. They were fun. My only problem, and maybe it was choreography thing, is I felt like she was flourishing a lot and she was turning around a lot, which in drag performances is a kind of a trick when you forget the words and you're trying to get your place. You do a little twirl so you can like recalibrate and get yourself back to where you're supposed to be. And it's possible that it was just a part of the choreography, but it appeared to me and to my drag eyes that she did not know some of the words, which is why she kept turning. And here's where I completely disagree with Santino here. Trixie always does a lot of stuff around her face with her hands. So you can't say she was doing more than normal because she's always doing something around her face and her mouth. When she was coming down the stairs, she did one turn, but that was to get into a squatting position, grabbing the rail. Granted, she could have turned the other way, which maybe that was a mistake on her part, or maybe she was turning around. The only other time I really noticed her turn her face away from the camera while it was on her face was when that box came up behind her. And listen, I'm sorry, like maybe if it was a rehearsed for days kind of thing, maybe if you knew you were gonna get a couple more takes, you could just stand there lip sync, hope that that box was gonna be there and hop up on it. I don't wanna be the queen that falls past the box, misses it and lands on my butt and sits on the skinny gay dancer and kills him. <laughs> she turned around to make sure the box was there, put her hand on it and then turned back around. That's what I saw her do. It did not strike me as a, I don't know my words. So now we have the final runway of the entire season and it's category best drag. So- yeah, Was it? Yeah, that was, was the category. Was it? BB looked fine. I don't think it was her best drag. I didn't think it was her best drag and also I really hated how cheap that headpiece looked. I think if it had been like a skull and then she had like bones and like a bone charm necklace and like gone full like a cult with it, I think I probably could have bought it and I could have been like, okay, I'm about this. But I just thought that that Lion King headpiece just looked like she pulled it out of like the $5 bin at Walmart. It was definitely a touring production of the Lion King outfit, which you know, she's always giving nods to her, her African roots. She is African yeah. and that's amazing. I just think there were some ways that she could have elevated it a little more. And made it a little more expensive. Yeah, I would have liked to seen like rhinestones on the leopard print or something. Um, just, I feel like that would have given me a little more of like a excitement or dazzle. I would have liked like, uh, did she have a belt? She didn't have a belt. I don't think she, she had a belt. I would have loved like a dark leather belt in the middle, something kind of chunky and fun with maybe dangly bits to like break up all the print. All the animal. Um, all the animal. I would have loved um, if like attached to the headpiece had been like a long like scarf thing mm -hmm. or if instead of it being a head wrap if she had had like long braids or something yeah. or if we had been able to see hair I maybe would have felt differently about it. Next we have Kennedy. Rainbow. Two final runways in a row. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that it was the same color palette. When I saw the original screen grab, I thought it was gonna be like an all red fantasy and I was like about that. Yeah. And then it was the exact same color palette that she used for season seven. Yeah. And I just, I mean. At first blush, it was really cool looking. Yeah. I instantly take it back by like, oh, it's another rainbow look, but that's, you know, she, she had her reasons behind rainbow and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, at first blush, it was really stunning and I appreciated that this time the hair went into the dress too and it was stunning. Unfortunately, I feel like when you saw it closer up, when they zoomed in, I feel like something about the dress looked like glitter paper from it Michaels. It looked like Michael's glitter paper. And I don't, I couldn't tell from the screen if it was like fabric with rhinestones. If I don't know what that material glitter, was. But something about it definitely looked like glitter cardboard. Shangela's dress was gorgeous. Beautiful that dress. That dress was beautiful. It looked super expensive. I didn't love the hair with it. Um, I wanted it to have a little more volume in the back because Shangela is so petite. I, li I didn't mind it going out on the sides. I just wanted it to have a little bit more up here. Maybe if there was like one or two little tracks that she could have put in there just to give it a little walk. If I had to critique it, if I had to like nitpick and be like, something was wrong. I think it was a stunning dress. It was beautiful and it, I'm 
shocked that Shangela was able to pull that off because she is such a small, petite queen and that dress was so big, but she didn't look like she was drowning on it. I disagree about the hair because I think if the hair was any bigger, I think then it would have started being the wig and the outfit walking out on the runway. Mm -hmm. Is that Shangela inside of it? Sure. The whole thing was, for some reason, was very like, Carrie Washington at the Met Gala or something. Okay. I don't know. I really like that. My critique was that Shangela didn't have any sort of jewelry on. I can see I think that. she had earrings, but she looked a little bare. It, there, it needed something up here um, that was maybe like lighter, because there was because the roots and the wig were dark, and then the dress was a dark like gunmetal gray. So like some sort of like diamondy something, but very dainty. Nothing big and chunky, but just some sort of like diamondy, spindly, like, you know those wire necklaces mm -hmm. that have the diamonds on them? Something like oh, that. Oh, that would have been beautiful. And then finally Trixie, whose dress was gorgeous, stunner. It was perfectly Trixie. Yeah. My only thing, I didn't like the poodle bump it, but I liked everything else. I just didn't, well maybe, maybe I would have not minded that poodle bump it if the two pieces on the side had been like pulled back and if it had been like really sleek and like pulled up, maybe I wouldn't have been so mad at it, but I didn't, something about the silhouette was a little like a mushroom cap to me. I disagree because it gave me full like, it was like she said, it was Trixie Mattel, Mint in the Box, and it was like Miss Paris. It was just a stunning dress. Like you know she has kept that secreted away in a suitcase all its own this entire time just to be like, bam, <laughs> oh honey. And I really liked it. And she really did look like one of those overly expensive, like 80 to $100 Barbies you see like at the top of the shelf at the very end Behind of the Barbie. Glass. Where it's like, the box is like, the normal Barbie box is this big, but for some reason it's this big. Yeah. And it's got all these intricate things and then a cut out with the Barbie inside like. So then the queens got to meet with the eliminated queens. Who do you think looked the best. I'm really torn between Asha and Thorgy. I loved Thorgy because Thorgy used that fabric on every single accessory on her. I think it was on the glasses. Yeah. It was on the earrings. It was like in the hair too. Like I loved that. I love queens who like purpose things into multiple parts of the outfit. And then Aja doing a devil when her promo look was an angel. Those two just tied. Outfit wise, I think I was really taken with Aja's. Just, I love a good concept like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then she played that long con of, I'm gonna start the, in the promos in this, I'm gonna end how, wherever I am as a devil. I just love that little twist. Um, I actually really loved Morgan from the neck up. Yeah. I loved her little short, like 1920s Lara Bow wig with that like long black uh, shawl thing. Um, and then makeup wise, the winner for me of all the comeback queens was Thorgy because that shadow right here looked like she was carved from stone in the yeah. best way possible. It was just, just that one shadow had me so moist. shook and moist. I was shaking off the moisture. So Rue revealed at the beginning of the episode that the queens would face a jury of their queers, and now this was the moment. All four queens went in, sat down in front of the eliminated queens, and got to plead their case as to why they should be in the top two, because it was up to the eliminated queens who the top two lip syncing for the crown would be. Each queen got to plead their case to varying success, and the queens then voted um, by choosing two lipsticks. The first lipstick they chose gave two points. The second lipstick they chose gave one point as revealed on Twitter. And the two queens that made it to the top, too much shock and awe and kerfuffle on Twitter, were Kennedy Davenport and Trixie Mattel. I really wish that Rue had gotten a third vote. Like the Eliminated Queens chose two and then Rue could choose one more. I feel like I wouldn't be so upset because Kennedy's had such a bad track record and I feel like she made it into the top two because people like her outside of the show. And she made a great case uh, when she sat down. She gave a very moving, convincing case as to why it should be her. And in fact, Kennedy had the most votes. The real sham of the episode is that Shangela did not get even the chance to lip sync. Such and a bummer. 
it is such a bummer and it is disappointing because she did do very well this season. She did great. She tried her hardest. She fought really hard. She played the game. And when it came down to it, karma, honestly, I feel like karma came back and bit her in the ass. The other thing I do find very interesting and a little bit telling in this episode was Rue announces it'll be the returning queens who get to pick the top two. All the queens were gagged, but Shangela's reaction was markedly different than everybody else's. She was else's. really cracked. Shangela instantly shut down. She was very shut down through the whole rest of the evening. She instantly shut down. Because I think she down. knew she wasn't going to make it because she's eliminated other queens and she knows it's going to be a popularity contest at that point. Shangela did play a game. She Game of Thrones to everyone else. And if anybody watches Game of Thrones, it hasn't happened to Daenerys Tarragon yet. But everybody knows when you play the Game of Thrones, you get bitten in the butt at some point. It comes back and the enemies you've made and the bridges you've burned come back and hurt you in the end. Yeah. Like, you know, it's why Cersei Lannister, Lannister? Cersei Lannister had the throne and then the next minute she's walking naked through the streets with all her hair chopped off crying while people throw rotten fruit at her. It is a circular game where if you're going to make these sacrifices and make these choices here, they all have consequences down the road. And Shangela plays a great game, but I don't think she thinks about those long-term consequences. Who would have known that this would be the twist at the end though? How could I have known? But that's the thing, you always need to be prepared for something like that. I personally am of the opinion that while maybe it was not the correct choice, it probably, it was not the correct choice of the Queens to not put Shangela in the top two. It was a result of the game Shangela played. Absolutely. And she knew it, and that is why she shut down. And we can all be mad about it, we can be upset about it, we can be hurt about it. What we cannot do is send death threats to Trixie, any to any of the queens, discount anybody's performances. Or Rue. Or Rue, tear anybody down, start wars online on Twitter, because it happened, and it happened a year ago. It's said and done. I don't think Shangela is going to be hurting in terms of popularity, in terms of you know, what she can accomplish because she's a working girl and she has proven, I think time and time again, that I, she doesn't necessarily need the Drag Race credo to get what she wants in life. She wanted it. Shangela earned it. She fought very hard. Shangela did well almost every single week, minus the Andy Warhol ball. She performed so well this whole competition and brought it every single week. Regardless of shtick or not, she was trying really, Hard. Overarchingly, the truth of the matter is, the top four we got is not the top four we should have had. No. The top it, four we top should, four have, should had. have been Trixie, Aja, Dela, Shangela. Yes. That's who it should have been. Somebody on Tumblr pointed out that the day that the finale was released was the Ides of March, and they said that <laughs> they were like, Julius Caesar, whom Shangela was stabbed in the back by everyone. So that being said, the top two, Kennedy and Trixie, out of those two, Trixie deserved it far more than Kennedy, just based off of track record. We got the lip sync, which was Wrecking Ball, which was such an odd lip sync choice for the final I, runway. You know. Final. I would have rather had Wrecking Ball last week and then gotten Freaky Money this week. Something. Like, why didn't it end with a RuPaul song? Honestly, this dumpster fire of a season just, this season fell apart. Like, it was already on off to a rocky start. Dela was what was keeping us engaged, and then she left, and the whole thing just fell apart. Mm. And this, I mean, I'm almost glad the season's over. <laughs> I'm exhausted from it, honestly. I just didn't understand that lip sync song. And then I wasn't super impressed with either performance, if I'm being completely honest. I didn't understand why Kennedy was performing without shoes. I ballet. don't understand what those splits were, because they were so weird looking in that gown. And then I hated Trixie's little flat rain boots. And someone was they like- They were cowgirl boots. <laughs> they were like rain boots. And someone on Twitter was like, when the top two's final lip sync number boils down to who's gonna win based off of who didn't wear shoes and who wore flat rain boots, I'm gonna pick the flat rain boots. If you wanna do a lyrical ballet split movement to the wrecking ball, if you want to slowly pull out tracks of your own wig, <laughs> she stays Elaine Matthew with that hair. Go with God. I can't. Trixie Mattel is our winner. She is our all-star season three. Opinions are what they are. Moods are what they are. 
again, I know you guys who watch our videos regularly already know this, but if you just so happen to stumble into this video, please remember, you know, death threats, you know, ragging on the other queens, express your frustration for Shangela that she didn't get a chance, but you don't need to do that by saying, the show's ruined, the show's ruined, drag is ruined, drag, drag is, is ruined, canceled, RuPaul's the worst, these other queens who didn't pick Shangela are the worst, Trixie doesn't deserve it, Trixie's all these are hurt. unnecessary, totally unnecessary. And if you are not a person who says those things, great. Anytime you see that happening, shut it down. For the love of God, it's a television show. It's about drag. A lot of people are pointing out though, and I would agree with this, is that since the switch to VH1, it seems to be more about reality TV rather than about competition. competition. Oh, and well, it's kind of a reality TV channel. I mean, it's, yeah. And I can understand why people are frustrated about that because there were elements of reality TV before, but it seemed to be a little more based on talent prior to about season eight. And then I feel like Bob winning and moving on into season nine, really, and even All Stars 2, really set up more of the reality TV type thing. And it was sure, sure. a lot of those untucked pre-season five where it was like the forced moments like, oh, look at this box that has this question in it for you to ask the other queen. And I can understand that. That's and fair. like Trixie winning, I love her. She's one of my favorite queens. And something just doesn't sit right with me because Shangela didn't even get the chance to attempt. If Shangela had gone in, in the top two, got into lip sync, didn't do as great, didn't get as many votes, whatever, I would be more happy with Trixie winning, but because it didn't feel like an evenly matched fight. And I wanted that justification of feeling like she fought really hard in that lip sync and did a really great job. Yeah. And I feel like that satisfaction would be more there if Shangela had been there and not succeeded. You know what I mean? I'm so happy for Trixie. She is wonderful. She is talented. She is funny. Um, I also want to point out, people keep... I mean, she is another white passing queen, but isn't Trixie Native American? Yeah, but she's more white than she is Native American. She, Your grandma, who's from freaking Alabama, says that she's Native American. I don't know how how much Native American Tracy is. But she does reference it a lot, so it does mean something to her. And she has referenced it in pre in her own season and talked about aspects of that. So I do want to say, while she is not a Latino queen or an African American queen, I do want to point out that Trixie does have an ethnicity that is not... She's a light... Skin. She's white passing, but white passing does not negate somebody's ethnicity. No, but she is a light-skinned queen amongst two other light-skinned queens in the, and that's fair. the Hall of Fame, the all-stars of the it's, it's a, other queens. It's a, it's a pale lineup. That is fair. I do just I just want to make sure people don't erase that aspect of who Trixie is. Mm -hmm. Yes, she, play, she paints as a blonde woman. She paints as a Barbie. But that is something that Trixie has referenced and she's talked about and it is some a part of her life. I just want to make sure that doesn't get just erased over and she gets called a stupid white girl. Yeah. So this was it. It's over. It's done. And then we can move on to season 10 almost right away. Oh, yes we can because that's when? Next week. <laughs> oh, okay. So you guys don't get a break from us. We're coming right back. Yeah. Right back into your phones, laptops, iPads, Androids, whatever you may the have. Background behind grinder. You know, that you know, your Apple TV, your Chromecast, whatever you use to watch us. I'm almost out of outfits in my closet, so y'all are probably gonna start seeing the same clothes. Shenanigans is what the you're same gonna start clothes. seeing. And please tune in next week when we uh, review and recap the first episode of season ten. We're gonna have a very special announcement at the end of that episode. So we're very excited for season 10 to begin. Um, congratulations, congratulations, Trixie Murcher. Um, and a well done to all of the queens of season three of RuPaul's Drag Star All Rage. <laughs> Shangela, your crown is waiting for you somewhere. You are queen for all seasons. Oh. Or two. Oh, poor Shangela. I just love her. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you all again next week when we start on season 10. Huzzah. Be sure to leave your comments, 
in the comment section below and try not to be like overly hateful or anything because I just don't, I just don't need that. We're fine with discourse, but keep it positive, keep it kind, we will keep shut- Keep it, um, keep it simple and always keep it semi-homemade. Thank you all so much for watching, we'll see you all then, bye!